What is up you guys? Glitches here and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you my latest and greatest mage build within Enshrouded. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of you guys already know with the latest patch with the Hollowed Halls, uh, the mage class got some really heavy nerfs. Acid Bite is pretty much useless now. A lot of the key skills that I spec'd into in my previous uh, best mage build uh, are no longer useful. So I had to start from the scratch basically and come up with something that's totally new and unique and it actually turned out to be really fun um, and uh, I'm not actually too upset about them doing the balance changes to the mage um, don't expect some crazy overpowered build anymore um, they did a good job at like layer like leveling the playing field and uh, kind of just bringing all the classes closer together so there's no one class that's going to be super super powerful anymore um, but uh, this build still uh, holds its own and uh, can solo even the highest tier 4 hollowed halls um, without any issues. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, right out the gate, let's go over the equipment. So for the helmet, I have the Elder Hat. That'll give us plus 15% magical critical strike chance as well as 12% critical strike damage. Uh, another alternate option that you can use is the Archmage hat because this has one additional percent towards critical strike damage. Um, you do get a little bit less resistances, but if you're getting good with the build and you find that you're not getting hit as much and you have pretty decent survivability, then why not just get the bonus damage? So feel free to swap to this one as well. That is a nice little uh, uh, option to pick uh, if you don't have the Elder Helmet. Uh, but moving back. For the chest piece, we have the Radiant Paladin chest plate. Um, we are rocking some heavier pieces because we want to hit that uh, soft armor and uh, damage mitigation cap, like I mentioned in my older videos. Um, that will give us 240 health and 24 stamina because once you hit the cap for armor, the next best thing you want to invest in is your health. And it's also going to be very important on mages because we can be pretty uh, squishy at times. For the gloves, I'm running the Elder Gloves. This will have 9% damage against magical foes and 12% magic damage as just a flat uh, bonus multiplier. Uh, for the pants, we have the Radiant Paladin Trousers. Um, this will give us plus 2 health regen and plus 90 health. And lastly, for the boots, I'm re uh, running the Radiant Paladin Boots for the plus 4 health regen and the minus 120 health regeneration delay bonus. That'll help for our health regen if we ever get caught out by a strong hit and it brings us up. Uh, down low pretty quickly it'll regenerate a little bit faster now for the rings one big thing that i want to mention is after the updates um especially with the infinite mana combo with rings of rapacity um that no longer works so mana is much more important now um, with this particular build, because of the staff we're using, which I'll go over here in a minute, uh, it's actually not as big of a deal as you think. But if you don't have this staff, what I highly recommend is running double rings of mana, uh, preferably the highest level ones you can get. I think the 20 mana and plus 3 mana regeneration, or plus 2 mana regeneration, is the highest that there is. There may be a plus 3, I'm not sure. Um, if there is, I haven't gotten it yet, but let me know in the comments if there is. Um, if it, it does exist, it'd be within the, any of the tier 4 zones. Um, I got mine in some of the Sun Temple chests. Uh, actually, I got a couple in the Hollowed Halls as well. Um, but for this particular build, because of the staff, I like to run one Ring of Mana for the 20 mana and 2 mana regeneration and one Ring of the Ancients, which does finally work properly now. That will give us plus one bonus stat to Dexterity, Strength, Constitution, Spirit, Endurance, and Intelligence. So we'll get a little more magic damage, a little more mana, a little more health, um, and... Uh, the spirit and dexterity or uh, strength and dexterity not as big of a deal because we won't use any melee weapons in this build but still not a bad bang for your buck uh, feel free to throw that in there um, if you do find yourself running into mana issues though feel free to try and throw on that uh, uh, double rings of mana though for the shield um, we're not using melee weapons at all in this build um, i don't even bother bringing one um, to blow stuff up because I just use my wand because um, that is something we will be using more in this build that we didn't before as well and uh, in this particular instance I'm running the ethereal plane because that will give us plus 10 shroud resistance so why not get the bonus uh, resistance stat because we're not going to be blocking really anyway now for the staffs the best in slot in my opinion staff that you can use for this build is the blackened staff that is because it comes with the perk mana leech 
which on hit you reach 5% of damage as mana. This is what is going to allow us to run the uh, Ring of the Ancients because with the amount of damage we're going to be doing with this staff, our mana is constantly going to be refilling and we will just be able to spam our fireball spells, spam all of our uh, healing or um, uh, bone uh, spells um, without any issues with mana running out. So this is a really, really good one and we get some critical hit chance percentage and critical hit damage uh, bonuses with it as well. Um, so definitely, in my opinion, the best go-to if you don't have the Mirage staff, the OG Mirage, or, or Mirage, the OG Shroud Reaver staff, the one that's level 35. This even I don't prefer using in this particular build because of the mana issues. You do get uh, a decent chunk more damage, but in the highest tier hollowed halls when you're soloing, it still takes two shots to kill most enemies. So even with that bonus damage, it's not enough to one hit them. So really what's the point of having the bonus damage if you have to fire it off twice anyway? Um, so I wouldn't even recommend using the OG. I recommend using the blackened at all times. Um, one thing you can do is, uh, I like to equip both the OG Shroud Reaver and the Blackened on my toolbar at the same time. For the normal enemies, I use my Blackened staff the entire time, but against the bigger Cyclops mutants, um, there is a particular spell that I like to spam against them. It's the new Bone Channel spell, which I'll go over here in a minute, um, and uh, you will do more damage when you're uh, casting it with the Shroud Reaver. So sometimes I like to whip this out just for the final big Cyclops bosses, but you don't have to, you can still get away with using the Blackened. And then for our wand, obviously the best in slot, in my opinion for this, is gonna be the Ritual Tempest Wand. There is the Helix Wand, which is another good choice for things outside of the Hollowed Halls, but most of the enemies are going to be resistant to the um, uh, Helix Wand in there, so it's not really worth using. You do get the bonus extra um, uh, projectile, but more damage is better in my opinion. So run the legendary Ritual Tempest Wand if you can. Moving on to consumables. This is also going to be much more important now um, because we don't have infinite mana. We don't have as, as big a one-shot spells as we did before. So we're gonna the fights are going to be a little bit longer now. Um, obviously, highest level health potions you can, highest level mana potions. I like to bring some Wisps of, uh, of Light because that uh, helps with visibility. A lot of the areas in the hollow halls are super dark and there's a lot of secret areas that you could miss if you don't see your surroundings very well. I also like the uh, elixir uh, consumable that will give us a plus 30% damage multiplier. And I do have a really good spot to farm these uh, with a guaranteed spawn. Um, you get two of them every time. Um, it will be, I'll probably make a guide of my best uh, um, altar locations here and this will be one of them um, but it is going to be right over where is Rockmore right here so right in the beginning zone it's called Rookmore um, I put an altar right outside this little uh, bandit camp um, if you come in from the eastern side entrance uh, immediately turn left from the entrance and there's going to be two tables and there's two guaranteed elixir spawns on those tables so what you can do is you can do the reset farm method where you can just spawn at your altar pick up the two potions reset spawn at your altar again they'll refresh pick them up again and that's how you can get some really quick stacks of those really powerful potions same goes for the prayer of flame scrolls this is another really important um, consumable for mages that i recommend you use um, this will give us plus 20 percent magic damage which is huge and plus one minute time in the shroud which is also also helpful because you will actually be inside the shroud for a lot of the different areas within the hollowed halls um, and a good place to farm those is actually right where i uh, built my base um, right here on the uh, pillars of creation um, if you look here you have the icon for the research camp it's actually inside the mountain so if you're on top of this or happen to build your base here or just have an altar on the top or around here for better use of traveling. It's a good location to have an altar regardless because it's right in the center of the map. What you can do is actually fly down um, to the lower level inside the mountain, hit up the uh, research camp and loot all of the little scavenger boxes and the two chests there. And there's almost guaranteed one to up to three I've gotten before of those legendary scrolls um, within the research camp. So that is a really good place to farm those. Uh, moving on, 
Uh, if you die for whatever reason and you lose your uh, rested buff, I like to bring Flasks of the Fell for some additional stamina. Um, I also bring some Greater Shroud Survival Flasks for bonus time in the Shroud, um, just in case you're a little under-leveled and you get stuck in the Shroud for longer than you want when you're in the Hollowed Halls. Um, the two main consumables that you can craft that I like to bring is the Meat Wrap. That'll give us five constitution for a ton more health and one bonus intelligence for more magic damage, as well as a Glow Soup. Um, if you don't have the recipe for glow soup, any of the mushrooms will give you intelligence as well. But I really like the glow soup because it gives you plus 60 shroud protection and plus 5 intelligence. So that's another big boost to our intelligence there as well. And then the new consumable that I highly recommend using is actually the greater ectoplasm soup. You can craft this from the new vendor that you unlock with the new quest line that uh, just dropped with the hollowed halls. And what this does is for 50 minutes, so almost an hour, um, you get minus 100 health, which seems like a downside in the beginning, but the build is actually pretty tanky with some of the perks, but it gives us plus 12% bonus damage uh, against the hollow, which is pretty much every enemy within the hollowed halls and plus 9% life leech chance against hollow. So every time we're killing them, um, we are getting almost a 10% chance to regain all of the damage back that we do to an enemy. So really, really good buffs. I'll actually show that off right here. Um, you're going to eventually get this uh, new NPC and it's going to send you on a quest to um, basically create and craft the ectoplasm press. This will allow you to trade in the crystals that you can mine within the held halls to make these different uh, tier uh, ectoplasms. Once you get those ectoplasms, you can then talk to the um, new vendor and he has supplies for ectoplasm soups. He's got a low level one, which is only 50 health. 10 damage and 8 life leech and it just requires a low tier ectoplasm and uh, honey uh, and it only lasts for 35 minutes then you have the 50 minute one which is my go to which only requires sugar and the uh, medium tier greater ectoplasms and then he even has a third one that has minus 150 health but it gives you 15% damage against hollow, um, the hollow and a 10% life leech bonus the only problem is it only lasts one minute so for the amount that you're investing into it and the uh, negative effects that you're getting, you can really only pop this like right before a boss. And uh, it's really just not that worth it because it's barely any time in my opinion. If they ever change this to where that becomes 50 minutes as well, then I would recommend investing and in probably using this over the um, uh, greater ectoplasm soup. But that 50 minute timer is just way too good to pass up on for the plus one or plus two points that you're getting for the stat bonuses. So definitely, in my opinion, I recommend the medium tier one, um, but combined with all of those, um, you get some really nice stats, which I'll go over here in a minute. But before we do that, let's move on to the rest of the equipment. Um, the other weapon that I forgot to mention for the staffs is actually the new legendary um, sacrificial forget what it's called i actually haven't been lucky enough to get a legendary version of it yet but it's called the sinister crescent staff they do have a legendary version of this and it comes with all of these um, weapons from the hollow halls have a new perk called sacred which gives you plus 10 percent bonus damage to uh, enemies and with that are hollow enemies um, as well as 10 ice magic damage the legendary version of this has three of those so you get a big boost to damage to the hollow so if you run the double mana uh, rings you may not have uh, uh, much mana problems and you will get a ton of bonus damage for enemies within the hollow halls so the legendary version of the sinister crescent staff is another really good option for the hollow halls if you're not in the hollow halls i'd still use the um blackened staff um moving on to the spells the only ones that i use are eternal fireball that's always a go-to um, I did try the Eternal Ice Bolt that got upgraded. It is nice in certain situations. Um, it just doesn't do enough damage, in my opinion. And I find myself like speed running these uh, Hollowed Halls runs anyway. And with just the Fireball and the new Bone Channel spell, um, you do more than enough damage and AoE to clear stuff out. I never really had to worry about slowing things down. Um, I do like taking Eternal Heal Channel, though, because um, there is some gimmicky areas where you can actually cheese the bosses in certain places. Um, so if you get hit, you can glide up to certain areas that are safe and just quickly throw out your uh, eternal heal channel 
that will heal you pretty quickly. So I always take that around for enemies outside of the hollow. Uh, I do like to bring lightning channel because lightning is really uh, strong now. Um, this will just AOE with your um, uh, chain lightning uh, spells and your skill tree to enemies um, outside of the uh, hollowed halls really well. Um, but the new go-to spell that I love um, which is super, super strong in the Hollowed Halls, is the new Bone Channel Level 2 spell. It's very easy to craft because you get a ton of the materials during your runs that you're doing within the Hollowed Halls, plus all the sarcophaguses. Um, we'll drop these as well. Um, but the other thing is, is unlike the elemental damage of the other spells, the Bone Channel spell is actually blunt damage. And come to find out, all of the skeleton enemies within the Hollowed Halls are weak to blunt damage. So this will be critical and, like, uh, really uh, effective damage uh, tags um, with all of your hits and it's very similar in the fact that it's a chain spell sort of like chain lightning where you just gotta hold it down and you'll just keep summoning these bone shards um, so you can uh, spam these and this is the spell that I like to use on the big cyclops bosses um, you can really burn them down quickly with this spell if you know how to maneuver properly so those are the um, spells that I like to use um, and uh, with all of them put together it's really really cool the other consumable, last but not least, that I do like to bring is the Greater Skull Summoning Vessel. This is another new item that just dropped with the updated patch. Um, what this does is you throw it, it's a throwable item, and when it hits the ground, it explodes and summons a little necromancer skull, and we will be taking necromancy in our skill tree now. The skulls did get a buff. The damage seems to be a little bit better now, and they track to your character a lot better now, so they stick right to you and attack enemies a lot quicker. You don't have to worry about them lagging behind. Um, so there's instances, I'll probably show clips here um, during the final combat thing here in a minute, where you can get upwards of like six or seven of these skulls going at one time. And uh, on the lower tier hollowed halls, you can uh, one skull can kill one of the skeleton enemies in like two to three hits. So you get six or seven of them up and running and that is a ton of bonus damage that you just passively get. Um, so in my opinion, it's super worth it to take that ability now. Um, and it actually is a ton of fun just to have an army of skeleton uh, heads that just follow you around. So really, really cool. Um, but moving on, the next thing I guess I'll go over is the most important thing, which is our skills. A lot of things have changed. So right out the gate, you want to take um, Endurance, Runner, and Double Jump, so you have some additional maneuverability. Pick up the Quick Point and Endurance, followed by Wanderlust for increased sprinting uh, percentages on dirt roads. And then lastly, Good Metabolism. This will give us a bonus um, 10% uh, to the respective resources for the orbs that we generate, which we will be taking. Our main go-to um, spawner of those orbs will be our wand, um, but it also works for mana and health potions, which are nice, because we will be popping those uh, in a rare instance as well. Gives them a 20% boost um, to your potions as well, which is nice. Uh, moving on, or... The main thing, this is if you're um, starting out lower level and you are building into this build, obviously you're not going to have the eternal staff spells yet. So the first thing I would uh, recommend you invest in is your wand uh, skill tree points. So pick up the point in intelligence followed by arcane deflection. Um, I like to pick up blink for maneuverability. This is really helpful with a mage. It gets you out of dodge really quick. Um, followed by the quick point in intelligence again. Pick up Unity, Damage Enemies with Wands, has a 24% chance to recover additional mana, followed by Wand Master and Sting. Sting will increase the damage by the wand by 20% after repeated hits, and Wand Master allows for the possibility of an additional projectile, so that Ritual Wand can summon two projectiles at once now, um, which is nice, followed by the Quick Point in Spirit and the Quick Point in Intelligence. Then I would recommend going into the uh, kind of the tank tree, um, pick up the point in shiny plates for the 10% bonus armor, followed by evasion attack. Then you want to pick up battle heal when dealing damage uh, with a melee weapon. You can re uh, heal 5% of your maximum health. This is kind of a throwaway because I don't really bring any melee weapons, but we use it to get to these next perks. Um, quick point in spirit, followed by bloodletting. When scoring a critical hit with a magical weapon, there's a 50% chance to spawn two health, mana, and or stamina orbs. This is really nice because it combos with that uh, metabolism perk. Um, so they get really powerful when you pick them up and you can heal huge chunks of health, and huge chunks of mana with just one orb and they'll spawn pretty frequently with your wand, especially when they chain hit to multiple enemies. 
Um, next, pick up Life Burst when killing an enemy with a magic weapon. All players within 15 meters gain health equal to three times your intelligence. And we will have upwards of 20 plus intelligence with this build by the time all of our consumables are turned on and whatnot. And then lastly, pick up Blood Magic when your mana drops below 20%. You restore up to 20% of your maximum mana at the cost of one health per mana. This will stop at one health. So this is a good like get out of jail free card, especially if you're not using the blackened staff. As soon as your mana bar gets depleted, it'll instantly jump up 20% of your maximum uh, mana pool and give you enough to cast another spell right away. And that'll just keep jumping back up. So a really good combo there. Next, you want to pick up heavy plates for the uh, bonus physical damage mitigation. Then you want to pick up the point in Constitution for more health. Um, here, it's kind of up to you. Um, personally, I take Tower because I feel like you get hit with a, as a mage more by physical attacks. So having the bonus 10% less physical damage is more beneficial in my opinion. However, we do have a little bit less magical resistance in this build than we do physical resistance. So if you feel like you're maneuvering well and you're not getting hit, you can pick up Warden instead, and it'll actually work out in your favor um, because the next point will be in Constitution, which will actually help you more. It'll give you plus 50 health um, instead of uh, wasting it on the strength. Um, but I go with the Tower because I think the damage mitigation is better. Um, strength, kind of a throwaway in this particular case, but we use that to get to Earth Aura. This is going to be a flat 10% um, damage uh, mitigation buff to you and all players within 10 meters of you. And this is permanent, so this will always be up. It's just a free 10% damage buff, um, which is really nice. Moving on, um, you want to pick up the Quick Point in Intelligence on the Healer Tree. Then on the Wizard Tree, you're going to be taking most of these. Point in Spirit, followed by This is the Way. When attacking with a magical weapon, all damage is increased by 10%. Then we want to pick up our friend Necromancer. This is what's going to give us a 10% chance to spawn our little skeleton fiends. Um, and I'll probably show some clips where you can get a ton of these up. One big thing with the Hollow Halls is they've added a much larger mob size to the different uh, battles that you're doing throughout the hollow halls so you're going to be fighting tons of enemies at once so there's actually a really high chance to summon these skulls because you're killing big groups of enemies very quickly um moving on quick point in spirit followed by arsonist and pyromaniac for the 30 percent bonus to all fire damage fireball is going to be our main spell so that's a really good bonus there also pick up thunder and lightning for 30 percent bonus to uh, thunder damage this will be good for our ritual uh ritualist wand as well as our chain lightning um, so really good to pick up that. Moving on, quick point in intelligence, followed by wizard. This is an obvious one. When attacking with a magical weapon, your critical hit chance is increased by 10%. So that'll bonus, uh, give us a uh, crit chance there. Um, chain hit and mass destruction is what we're going to use to combo our fireball and allow us to hit multiple enemies at once. But not only our spells, but also our wand. Um, so a really good combo there. Really good for AOE damage. And then lastly, the quick point in intelligence. Moving on. I like to pick up Well Rested. Um, this increases your rested buff by five minutes. Some of the end, uh, like tier four hollow halls, you're in there for upwards of 30 to 40 minutes. Um, so depending on when you jumped in, if you were doing other things before, or if you die for whatever reason, um, uh, well, if you die, you're going to lose it. But either way, if your rested buff uh, isn't as high as you would like, there is a potential that it could run out too soon. So having that is nice. And it's just nice to have in general, especially just when you're out in the wilds. Um, then you want to pick up quick charge. This is huge, um, reduces the time that staffs required to charge of spells by 50%. This is going to be a no brainer. Um, staffs are pretty much useless unless you have this ability. Um, next pick up counter strike after receiving damage. There's a 20% chance to reflect 50% of that damage back to the attacker as fire damage. And that does combo with arsonist and pyromaniac. Then we have Updraft. We do get to take Updraft in this build. It wasn't in my previous one because we wanted to min-max our points, but very good for flying here. And it's also good in the Hollowed Halls if you want to cheese certain boss fight encounters because you can jump up onto higher ledges and they can't hit you. Um, not that you need to, but it is handy in a tight situation. Um, quick point in Intelligence followed by Be Gone. Uh, it's not really that useful. We won't be doing it that much, but it basically replaces your melee with a power punch that can stun enemies. 
followed by the quick point intelligence and then lastly terror this is a huge one on a critical hit with a spell which we will be doing all the time the target will be stunned for four seconds so if you throw a fireball into a big mob there is a good chance that half if not all of the pack once your chain reaction goes off will get stunned so you can literally sit there and just keep on spamming fireballs and they can't do anything about it so a really good combo there and so, yeah, that is pretty much the build, you guys. And in my opinion, the proper order, if you're progressing through it, um, wands definitely focus on first, um, then work into staffs once you start getting into your uh, eternal spell unlocks. Um, but now what we can do is go ahead and pop all of our consumable items that I recommend and show you what our attribute stats are. So let's go ahead and pop our constitution, pop our glue pop our potion here, pop our scroll, and then pop our frenzied potion. So tons of buffs here. So we're going to go into our character sheet, all attributes, and as it stands, our primary uh, points, 12 constitution, 10 spirit, 8 endurance, 7 strength, 6 dexterity, and 20 intelligence. That is huge. We're also getting uh, a nice little health regeneration delay for damage. We have 82% bonus critical damage, 10% critical chance. This is actually a little bit higher because of the perks that we have in our pool and with our uh, armor. Um, magical critical strike chance is 25%. Um, sneak attack damage, 900%. That's not a big damage there. Uh, difference there. 9% bonus to magical foes. 12% bonus damage to uh, uh, enemies within the hollow because of our our new potion that we have and 12% bonus damage with staffs for protections. Here's where we sit. Magical resistance 168, physical resistance 253, plus all of the bonus armor mitigation and physical mitigations we get with our skill perks like tower and things like that. So Really, really good, nice overall around build, and uh, you can blow through these hollow halls without any issues solo and uh, not have any problems. So I guess the next order of a business is to just jump into the hollow halls. I will probably just record a full run right now. I won't show the full run, but once we get to certain rooms that have really heavy packs of enemies and probably like one of the bosses, um, I'll cut to those clips and show you guys that. So check it out here in a minute. All right, so we're coming up to the first main hallway of the Tier 4 Hollow Halls. Here's a quick little uh, uh, fast farm that I can show off here that I like to do actually during these runs. Uh, I like to just bypass this whole area and pull them all to the final door. Um, so you can airdraft up and immediately glide down all the way to the bottom. And then what I like to do is I like to come right up here into this corner. And I just start spamming my fireball. And you can see that we can take damage. And, like, we just had guys pounding on us. And it didn't do anything. Of course, I get stuck. Boom. See how fast he can take him out? Spawned some of our skeleton buddies. These guys are always annoying. Whip out your wand, summon some orbs. Quick and easy. Let's clear out the whole room. Here's another really good location to show off this build. Um, a lot of enemies spawn in this one. We tend to get a lot of skulls if we're lucky with this area too. So let's check this out. And you can get away with literally just spamming fireballs. Okay, we already got one skull. There's another one. That was like unlucky with skulls. 
normally we can get a lot more than that. While we're here, not sure if you guys know, there is actually a little secret area over here. I can show that off. Gonna need to bring your mining pick. Oh, come on. Come on. There we go. A little hidden doorway here. There's usually nothing too crazy in this chest, but... Or maybe there is. I just got a legendary ornate bow. I'll take that. Um, if in a legendary you can drop them that, then it has the potential to be a hollowed weapon as well. So that's pretty cool. It's good to know. That's the first time I've gotten a legendary from that chest. Got uh, creator luck on that one. <laughs> Come this way. Here's our first little gliding puzzle. There's another little uh, secret area before you go on to the second half. Come through this little hole in the wall and then up through this little fun guy area. We got another secret door with a nice little chest here. There's a little hollowed axe. Not a legendary, but hey, better than nothing. Moving on to part two of our little flight puzzle. I love the flying puzzles in this. Okay, here's our first little boss zone. Although you don't need to, I'll show off... Uh... I always like to try and take out these two things first. Big boy's not gonna let us. That's okay. We'll just come back around for round two. There we go, now they won't respawn. Um, while we're here, you don't have to do this, but this is also a little trick. You can updraft onto this little ledge here and nothing can hit you up here, so this is a safe spot. Not that it's needed, but it does work. And it can break line of sight on the boss. So it'll give you a chance to clear out some of these guys without being uh, bombarded by other enemies. Plenty of health orbs. Regenerate right back up. What's cool is if you quickly glide out of the way and break line of sight of the boss, he won't chase you, which is nice. So I like to try and clear out as many of you guys as you can before going after the boss. Because I like to use a bone channel. Now here's an example where you can switch to Switch to the Shroud Weaver to do more damage. Come on. So tons of damage. I'll use one just to be safe. Yeah, I'm already dead. Okay, you see how fast we took him out? So that Bone Channel 2 spell is super powerful against skeletons. You can use it on normal mobs as well, um, but uh, against the bosses, it's super, super useful. It just burns them down so quick. Another thing that actually I didn't notice at first is there's another uh, little secret room in here. You shoot these uh, little buttons way up top. That'll open a secret door here on the side. I missed this my first couple runs. So here's another potential loot spot. Hawk trousers, nothing crazy. Mm. 
these guys I like just burning down with the lines. They're super easy. Hello. So there's the first main boss room. Then we actually got a nice little demo here coming up in a second with a ton of skeletons and some more guys, so I might as well show that off. But you can see how fast we're burning through this. This is the highest tier howl at all, and uh, it's like nothing. Fireball, tons of AoE damage. Skeleton buddies are helping us out in the background. Dunning them, they can't do anything. I can get a lot of skeletons in this area right here sometimes. This will be a good demo. Hopefully, we get lucky. Look at the army of skeletons that we got helping us out now. Come on. Yeah, so we've got what? One, two, three, four, five skeletons. If we wanted, we could literally throw a couple of our little plumes out. So you can see like how fast you can get an army of these. I didn't even do it during the boss fight, but you can actually preemptively throw a couple of those canisters out and have like four or five of these out to begin with. So you just have like a little army following you around right from the start of the boss fight, which is nice. So that's another uh, strategy you can use to make the fight a little bit easier. And there's like three tiers of those skeleton canisters that you can uh, craft. Um, and even the highest tier ones aren't that difficult to get. This is uh, the go-to chest that I'll probably end on. Been trying to farm that legendary uh, sinister staff. Let's see if I get lucky this time around. Get in my minions. Drum roll. Oh, Bone Scourge Mace. I just got this legendary last time. If I hadn't had it, that would have been a nice draw. That's also, in my opinion, that's probably going to be the best mace to use for my new warrior build that I'm making for the Hollows, is that new mace, that two-handed mace. So keep an eye out for that weapon in the next video. Um, and I know I didn't mention it, but I do intend on making an updated build for all the three classes um, because a lot of things have changed across the board with this patch and I'm going to be updating all of them uh, because there's some really cool new weapons and stuff that you can use. Uh, but yeah, I say that is a good place to end that. Let's head back to the home base here. Um, but as you can see, super easy. Didn't really have any issues. I popped one potion there uh, at a spike because I got stuck in a corner of a wall. That was my bad, but uh, normally you wouldn't even have to do that. Uh, but yeah, you enjoyed the video if you found it informative uh, and if you uh, test it out and like the build be sure to drop a like on the video it really helps out and if you want to keep up to date on all my future content consider subscribing um, also we have links down in the uh, description for our discord we have hundreds of players in there it really blew up especially for the enshrouded community after my first wave of videos so feel free to click that link join us uh, look forward to seeing you guys around um, i do a lot of giveaways things like that. Hopefully we become a partner at some point. Uh, that will also be nice. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the build, you guys. Um, until the next one, hope everyone had a great day, and we'll see you all later.